Hello, everybody at home. Uh, my name is Tira Hader, and today I'm going to read my book, The Bear Report. This book is about traveling to the Arctic with a polar bear, which is why I am recording this video from the Arctic. Just kidding. I'm in my living room, but that is a big painting I made of the Arctic. Do you guys know where the Arctic is? If we look at the world, the world we are all on at this very moment, you can see there's Australia, there we are in the United States, or maybe you're watching from someplace else. Maybe you're watching from Africa or Europe or India or Russia. This is the planet that we are all on. And at the top of the planet, the North Pole, is the Arctic Circle. And the Arctic Circle is where polar bears live. Does anyone know what the bottom is called? It sounds a little bit like Arctic, but it's like Antarctic. So today we're going to travel to the North Pole. Here we go, the bear report. We open it up and see some footprints. Then we see some homework. It says, since we are learning about the Arctic this week, please find three facts about polar bears that you would like to share with the class. And we meet Sophie. Sophie does not look happy. What's the feeling Sophie's feeling? <sighs> Grumpy, mad, annoyed, bored. Anyone feeling bored out there? That's what she looks like she's feeling. <sighs> she doesn't want to do it. She doesn't want to do it. She doesn't open her book or anything and she writes down the first three things she thinks of. They are big. They eat things. They are mean. Look how she scribbled, they are mean. She was just ready to get that done with. And she goes and she watches some TV. We're not all mean. What? Who showed up in her living room? A bear? Oh my gosh. A polar bear? Look how surprised Sophie is. <gasps> You are a huge bear in my house. He is a big bear. I'm actually short for my age. My name is Oliver. I'm Sophie. She's still a little nervous. You can see he's a big bear. Would you like to see where I live, Sophie? Uh, no thanks, I've seen pictures. What? She's so bored and someone's offering her a very exciting adventure. No thanks, I've seen pictures, she says. It's better in person. Where are they now? Are they in the house? No, they're in the Arctic. It was too special not to show her, I think. Sophie's not that impressed though. She says, um, there's nothing here. She can't see anything. It's just all ice and water and sky. It's just nothing. But he says, I have a lot to show you. Are you hungry? Sophie can't see anything. So she says, what will we eat? He says, my favorite, fish sticks. Have you guys eaten fish sticks before? Have you eaten this kind of fish on a stick? <laughs> this is Oliver's favorite kind of fish stick. So he's licking his fish sickle here. Sophie doesn't look as excited about hers. And he says, I also like music. Music? Whale music? Whales don't make music. Sure they do. And he plops his head in the water. Ooh. 
Are there whales under there? Yeah, there are. Do you guys want to make some whale music with me? The way you do it is you start really low. Ooh, really low and soft. Ooh, can you make the lowest noise you can possibly make? Ooh, can you go all the way to the highest noise but still keep it quiet so it's That's my version of whale music. But you know, after you read this book, maybe maybe you should Google some whale sounds and we should really listen to those because that's really cool. It's beautiful. It's how they talk to each other. So this is a big bowhead whale and they live in the Arctic. And you can see Sophie and Oliver up in the corner looking. And now Sophie's pretty excited. And she says, what else is under here? And Oliver says, seals, foxes, snow rabbits, but they avoid me. So why couldn't Sophie see these animals before? Yeah, they're under the ice. So a lot of animals in the Arctic um, burrow into the snow and ice to keep warm and for protection. So this is a seal in a seal den with her baby and she's under the ice so that she can swim up underwater and they can have a little cave under here and be safe. We have an Arctic fox, snow rabbit. There's more. Oliver has more to show her. So they spend the whole day exploring the glacier. He says, this is my glacier mouse. It's a rock covered in moss. And you jump over from one piece of ice to another. And they're hiding and watching your little bird. And he says, shh, a buff-breasted sandpiper. And they climb up here and they, they see how deep this hole is by dropping a rock. And they climb up here and they look at the size of the whole glacier. And a glacier is like the slowest moving river you could possibly imagine. It's really thick ice that's just slowly moving down and breaking off and floating out into the water. And look, they're all the way up here. And Sophie shouts, I feel tiny. Look how far away they are. And he says, I sleep here and here and like this. And she asks, do you ever get bored? And he says, nope, I watch the birds. He doesn't get bored. Sometimes I dream I'm a goose, but a goose can't do this. <laughs> Splash. Thwack, 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 thwack. They have to dry off. Can you guys dry off with me? Thwack, 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 thwack. And then they take a nap. Shh. So these two friends are dry and warm and in the sun and they go to sleep. And they sleep and they sleep and they sleep and they sleep. But what is happening while they're sleeping? Can you guys see what's happening to the ice around them as they're sleeping? Yeah, it's getting smaller, it's melting, and it's drifting away. Because in the sun, when it's warm in the Arctic, the ice melts. So this big piece of ice that they're on is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And finally, Oliver says, quick, Sophie, wake up. We have to swim to shore. And you know, polar bears are very good swimmers. They're marine mammals, actually. But this is a really far distance to swim. And she says, you can swim this far, right, Oliver? 
And he says, I hope so. But Oliver, you're tired, she says. Yes, he says. But there's nothing else we can do. And he's getting really tired and they're out in the middle of the ocean. And Sophie, do you see? She's getting an idea. And she says, sure there is. And she plops her head in the water. And can you guess what she does? She calls the whale. Can you guys try and call the whale with me? Remember how to do it? Let's start really soft and high and then go low. Do you think it worked? Should we try it one more time? It worked. Good job, everybody. The bowhead whale drops them off on the beach right at sunset. You can see all the birds are going home to roost. And Sophie is so tired. And Oliver is so tired. <sighs> and they flop onto the snow. That was fantastic, Sophie. When did you learn to speak whale? Today, just like you guys. You guys see what they're watching, what the shadows are? Birds, yeah. Oliver, it's getting dark. The sun is finally setting. Perfect. I have one last favorite thing to show you. They hike up to the top of the hill. Does anyone know what this is called in the sky? Sometimes up north, the sky turns green and purple like this, and it's called the Northern Lights. It's very magical. And she says, I'm gonna tell everyone about you, Olafur. And he says, I'm going to tell everyone about you, Sophie. Where are we now? Are we still in the Arctic? No. We're back at home. We see Sophie. And you know that homework assignment from the beginning? Here it is, this little one. But look at what she's made. Look at what she's making. She's making a very extensive bear report. She has the map of where they went. She has the books of all the research. She has the paintings of her memories, his paw prints, the facts. If you read these, it says, they are not all mean and even mean bears are just hungry. Even all of her food is hard to find. Ice is melting. Polar bears need ice to hunt. So her little homework assignment became this huge research project. Does she look, wait a second. Does she look bored? Does she look grumpy? Does she look annoyed? No. What feeling does she feel now? What, what do you think it is? Excited? Interested, determined, hmm. engaged. And whose footprints do we see at the end? Yeah, they're, they're funny because they're handprints and footprints. How do you think? that a little girl would make footprints like that. I don't know, you'll have to figure that out. How do you think? Okay, so that's the bear report. And I think maybe now, if you guys want, 
we could maybe make a ice drawing or painting. So like the painting behind me, you can see that it's mostly made up of blue and white. So if you are in your house right now, which I imagine you are, um, try and look for a white piece of paper. It can be the back of a white envelope. It could be a blank piece of white computer paper if you have it. It could be a bill or something that your parents say they don't need anymore. And look for something blue to make marks with. It can be a marker, a pencil, some paint, and it could even be blue paper to cut it up. We are going to make an ice painting. First, we've got to hunt for blue things and white things to make this painting. That might be useful. Ooh, this will be really good. Hold on. Can I use your chocolate box? Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks. Ooh. I found my roommate Kate's chocolate box. I found some pencils. I found some pens. And a couple blacks in case I need it. I also found white computer paper that I could use. But instead of using that, I'm going to use this old receipt that I don't need anymore. So ask your parents if there are pieces of paper like this. You might wonder why would I ever use this paper over the brand new nice white paper. It's more fun because it's more of a challenge. So if you make it work, you feel really good about it. But also it's really good for the environment. And guess who lives in the environment? Us and for the polar bear. So because we read the bear report and we're thinking about the Arctic and ways that we could maybe help and preserve the Arctic, it would be fun if we used recycled paper for this Arctic drawing. So I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee and do you guys recognize who's on my coffee cup? It's me. I didn't get any white in my, in my pens. And you know why? If you look, at the Bear Report illustrations. I didn't actually use white paint when you see white. That part is the color of the paper. You can see the pencil line. And then I started putting blue and then brown in. So we're gonna try and use the background of the white paper to be the ice. And we're only gonna fill in the blue parts. I'm gonna start scribbling then I'm gonna stop and let's decide on a shape. Maybe I draw an outline like this. And instead of filling in this part, I'm gonna color around it. So I'm using the, I'm using my ballpoint pen right now, but maybe I wanna switch it up. It's always nice if you mix it up. Okay, now we stop a little bit and we look and what if we draw another shape? This one's a triangle. So this one was sort of a flat oval and this one's a triangle. And again, we're not gonna fill in the white part. We're gonna color around it. It's okay if it's not exact because ice is not an exact shape. So whatever you do is gonna look cool. If you accidentally scribble over it, that's okay. It'll just make it look more natural, actually, because the way that the ice looks in the Arctic is some, sometimes it's underwater, sometimes it's above water, so you can really play with the shapes that you draw. The only thing that we're working on today is trying to use the white of the paper as the white of the ice. Enjoy this. Do whatever you want. When I was making the bear report that we just read, I looked at a lot of photos of the Arctic, and then I actually took a trip to the Arctic. I went to Iceland and walked on a real glacier. I didn't see any polar bears because there's no polar bears that live in Iceland. I did see an Arctic fox though, which was very exciting. But the guide that I had, he's the one who actually showed me what a glacier mouse is, a rock that gets covered in moss as it slowly rolls down the hill. And every time a new part of its surface is exposed to the sun, moss grows on it. So 
it becomes this cute little green ball that looks a little bit like an animal, but it's just a rock. How are your shapes going? You see how I had space there, so I fit, I fit something in. Keep scribbling. Look how nice this part is because the colors got mixed up. It almost looks like this part goes under the water right here, very shallow. Can you try a section of small pieces of ice? Wow. Draw lines any way you want. Doesn't have to look like mine. And fill in some sections, but not others. My tummy growled, I'm hungry. I wish I had some fish sticks. A very small line between the white spaces, as if those pieces are close together. And sometimes I'll leave big sections as if there's more water. Remember, we're drawing the water. Oh, my desk made my, my pencil wiggle. But I kind of like it, that's okay. So up here, I think maybe I'll just draw a couple cracks. So that's the part of the ice that's breaking up. You can try and make it change. So there's more white up here. And maybe I put more blue down here. So maybe I take some of these bigger shapes and I cut them up as if they're breaking up. So maybe this one just draw a little chunk. Look, that looks like it's breaking off now. Maybe I'll put some of this underwater. Look at that little one. Maybe I'll put this all the way underwater. So this is where I got to. You can see it's not perfect. It's really cool looking though. I used all my different kinds of blues, all my different shapes, and you can keep going. You can keep filling it up, but the more blue you add to be water, the more of the white paper you fill up, the more ocean you'll have and the less ice you'll have. So you can decide how much ice you want to leave and how much um, water, but it's good to leave ice because polar bears need ice. And you guys remember my roommate's box of chocolate that she let me use? We're gonna make a little polar bear who can hunt on this ice that we just made. So let's try and draw one. I'm gonna take one of my blues and I'm gonna scribble the shapes. I'm gonna start scribbling without really worrying if it looks like a polar bear yet because how will I know until I start drawing? So polar bears have a big body. And they have a long neck. And sort of like a triangle skull a little bit. So a long neck. It's almost actually a big triangle like this attached to a big oval and then four legs. So I have my scribbles down. Maybe I take another color. I start drawing the outline. Polar bears are really big. They can be like nine feet long. If you want to measure out nine feet after you watch this video, you'll be so shocked at how big that is. So I didn't really make this shape right. Let's see. Let's, you can always fix a drawing. I'm just gonna scribble, scribble, scribble. And add his ears. 
And when a polar bear stands up, he's 10 feet tall. The biggest polar bear is 10 feet tall. That's crazy. That's as high as your ceiling, most likely. He's starting to look good. He's pretty good. I can keep scribbling. I can smile maybe. I can add some more. I know a cool fact about polar bears. Their skin is actually black underneath their white fur. And their fur, which looks white, is actually a clear tube. I know, it sounds really crazy, but it's true. It just reflects light around it. So if you see a polar bear at sunset, they, they look pink. So after scribbling for a while, you can add outline if you want. I always like to do it because you can always fix little things if you wanted to make his, I wanted to make his feet a little wider, his belly a little bit lower. But that's why I like scribbling first and building the drawing up as I go. So I can always fix things. So now we're gonna cut him out. And this might be the time that you ask an adult nearby to help you. If you wanna leave some of that ground, you can do that and fold it. So that he can actually stand up on your ice. So now it's time to hunt. I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have fun.